On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1979. We're going to be taking a look at Lightning Hopkins. Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So let's get Lightning Hopkins up on screen and see how he gets on. I'm going to do that. I'm going to get me a mojo hand. You know, I'm going to fix my woman so she can have no other man. I'm thinking, thinking about a mojo hand. I did down thinking, I was thinking about a mojo hand. You know, I want to fix my woman so she can have no other man. When she got another man, this that me good. Can a woman ain't funny? Ah, uh, when she got another man. You know she won't look straight at you, then she does. Always read the sand. And there we have it. This is one of those performances, obviously, when Lightning Hopkins is 67 or 68 years of age because he was really hitting the scene in the late 40s and into the 50s. So obviously there aren't a hell of a lot of live videos of him performing, but this kind of performance gives you an idea as to the way that he plays in such a free form manner, but also his technique on the fretboard. It is something that we will dive into and look at a little bit because he's one of those guys who just learned to play by himself. He did get a bit of help from his cousin as well, who showed him a little bit of how to play the guitar, but you can tell from his technique that he just learned to play this instrument by himself, and he just plays the way that he needs to in order to express what he wants to. The other thing that is important to appreciate is when I'm looking at different guitarists who are playing the blues, and they might play a line that you call, or I refer to as a classic blues line, these kind of guys, the old bluesmen of the 40s and the 50s, were the guys that made those lines classic. So when you talk about a guy like Lightning Hopkins and say that he's playing classic blues lines, 
It doesn't really apply because the classic nature of those blues lines came from the players that first did it. And then other players in future generations took on some of those lines and replicated them. But we are looking here right back into the 40s, late 40s of just blues guitar and playing with soul and playing with a feeling and emotion. So getting into the guitar work, first of all, I'm gonna show you guys the bass line because this is something that is so solid throughout in terms of following Lightning Hopkins in the way that he is pretty much just jamming along, playing very free form in nature. So you can see the way that the bass is just looking to make sure that he's changing at the right time because this is something about Lightning Hopkins he will just play the way that he wants to play. And you do get the impression that the band just follow wherever he goes. So having this bass line that is going on is relatively straightforward. We've got this. That kind of thing. And obviously over to the A. Like that, obviously up to the B. Back to the A. And then a little turn around and then we're back into it. So we've got that kind of vibe from the bass going the whole time. But when we get into Lightning Hopkins technique on the fretboard and the way that he plays the strings with the right hand, you have to do away with your pick. If you do have a thumb pick, you can use that because I believe that's what's being used here in order to play the low E string and the A string and the other part of the hand being used, it's just the first finger. And you'll see this when he plays the low E string and he just gives a little flick like that of the high E string and the B string. And this is something that if you're used to playing finger style, it's gonna be a little bit awkward because you'll want to, with your muscle memory, play that high E string with your third finger as when you're playing, that's what you tend to do, and that's what you would have learned to do when you're playing finger style. And going, you'd use the second finger and the third finger in order to do that. But the technique is totally unique here. I've just put on my thumb pick in order to show you guys what's going on with the right hand. And what Sam's doing here, I could be calling him Lightning Hopkins the whole time, but it is a bit of a mouthful. So we're gonna to refer to Lightning Hopkins as Sam from here on in. And also with the history that I'll get into at the end of the video. But with the right hand, we've got this to begin with, the little, alternating pattern between the E and the A string. So we've got this. Like that. So it's just literally E and then I'm playing this classic. I said classic, but it is now, of course, isolating those notes on the A string. We've just got the B and the C sharp. And you're just gonna be pedaling between those two. So we've also got the more rhythm approach rather than picking out individual strings with this. Like that, which is just letting that thumb go across both of those strings. And you've got this first finger free. If you want to just copy exactly what's going on here from a technique perspective, we want to have this. Just a little flick with that first finger and most of the time he's only catching one string and then when he moves over to the A he's just hitting that G string with his first finger and it's exactly that same principle of jumping from the rhythm Like that. So just using that first finger to do those upstrokes on the high E string and also the G. So we've just got our standard blues progression here, which means we're going to our B seventh, down to the A. And we've got this little rundown from the A seventh chord. So you just want to bar with your first finger as far as the D string. Just squash all of those strings down. And you'll hear that we've got that sixth in there as well but we want to come on to the seventh with that third finger or second finger or little finger, whichever is most comfortable. But then we've just got, so then take 
shake off that third finger or whichever finger you're using. And then we're just going to open strings. And the way that Sam is playing here, it is all quite loose and really freeform. So don't worry about hitting an extra string here or there. So once we've got this, it doesn't really matter if we hit that G accidentally as well, because we're going back into the, the E. So we've got this. Obviously, if I'm playing it exactly the same way as Sam is, we've got this. And you can get a little bit more purchase on the string because you can almost grab it before then applying the changes to the chord. So we've got this. So playing it exactly like the performance here is gonna feel awkward if you do play finger style because that second finger and third finger will want to jump in to play. And just play those strings up at the top there. Same thing really, when you get to the A, the first finger and second finger will want to play the G and the B in there, and again back to the E, like that. As we progress into the B7th, your second finger will want to play the B string there. And as we move down to the A, the second finger and the third finger will obviously want to play the high E string and the B string. And then obviously the a little turnaround rundown, the first finger, second finger will want to get involved. So I would say that if you are playing this, from a technique perspective, you probably want to stick to being strict with finger style. The important thing to remember here is that back in the day, these blues players started out without having access to anything. They might hear something and then they'll try and replicate that on the guitar and they don't know about finger style. They haven't got YouTube where they can just load up some technique videos and see how everything's done. So they just worked out their own way of doing it, which means that when they did break onto the scene, they were unique and the way that they played was unique. Another thing that Sam does is play this low E string and A string pretty much consistently to keep the whole rhythm moving along, but to fill in the sound as well, even when he's playing lead. There is a little line that he plays where he's pulling off from the 12th fret of the high E string down to the 9th fret and then pulling off to the open string. And when he's playing that, Still playing that low E string with each of those notes that he's playing on that high E string. Just to throw in there as well, if you're playing the E chord and you want that same variation that we have on the A, you just go over to your seventh and you'll get exactly the same fill on the third fret of the B string. You can start throwing those two together if you want, just to balance up the sound and to get a nice consistent run and riff going through the whole piece. But I do want to get briefly into Sam's history. He was one of those that did start young. He was immersed in the blues from a young age, at age eight. He met his distant cousin who was Blind Lemon Jefferson, a guitarist and performer, and they did get together at informal gatherings at church and played together. In fact, Sam was the only player that Blind Lemon Jefferson would allow to play with him at these gatherings. In the mid-1930s, Sam would have been about 22 or 23 years of age. He went to prison for a time, I don't know what that was for, but in the late 30s, he and his cousin moved to Houston. Houston, and this was to attempt to break into the music industry, but unfortunately they were unsuccessful. And in the early 1940s, Sam was then working as a farmhand. It wouldn't be until 1946 that he then had his second attempt at trying to make it in the music industry. But he was discovered by Lola Ann, and she was part of Aladdin Records at the time, who were based in Los Angeles. So she convinced Sam to go to Los Angeles and also team up 
with pianist Wilson Smith. And this is where they did get together as a duo and record. It was also where the name came about, the Lightning Hopkins, because they thought that they needed something a little bit more dynamic in their stage name. So it was Lightning and Thunder that they came up with for Wilson Smith. He returned to Houston in the late 1940s, and at that time he started recording with Gold Star Records. He did go on to record between 800 and 1,000 songs, and he is the most prolific bluesman ever with the most albums recorded. He did perform regularly in nightclubs in and around Houston and started to get a following with all of these performances. It was in 1959 that Mac McCormick, who was a blues researcher, got in touch with Sam because he wanted to give Sam a little bit more exposure. And in 1960 is when Sam made his debut at Carnegie Hall and Joan Baez and Pete Seeger were also on the bill there. And in 1960 is when he signed with Tradition Records. Throughout the 60s and 70s, he would release at least one, sometimes two albums a year, and he would be constantly on the road touring, playing music festivals, folk clubs as well, college campuses, and he even did a tour of Japan in 1978, which would have been the year before the performance that we've just watched. Sadly, Sam died aged 69 in 1982 from cancer, and his guitar, his Gibson J160E hollow box, is currently on display at the Rock Hall of Fame in Cleveland. He also has his Guild Starfire on display in the National Museum of African American American history and culture, and that's in Washington, D.C. But it's great to have a look back at a later video here of just a few years, sadly, before he passed away. But you get such a great appreciation of Lightning Hopkins, the way that he plays, his technique, and how unique it was. Thank you guys so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at, and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock!